Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church. Healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Ashley, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, pen, and paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. We are in the Christmas season. We are in this series now called A Thrill of Hope, and our our productive production team has been working so hard to get the room ready and get the plays ready and, and props and all that. If you notice, there was a little bit more technology, a little bit more lighting involved in worship today. It's getting us set up for the Christmas production and things that are coming up. But today's sermon is called this, The Gift in You. The Gift in You. And let's just pause for a minute. I just want to really draw this out of you. I hope you know I hope you know that there is a gift in every single one of you. That there is a unique brilliance that God placed in you at birth. And I know that there's some people who are like, ah, there's nothing great that I do. Uh, there's nothing important. I don't have any talents. I don't have any skills. That's bull. Like, that's, that's a lie from the enemy. It's a lie of self-destruction and self-hate and self-pity. It's a lie. Every single one of you, if you are alive and you have breath, it's because there is a purpose that God has placed inside of you. There is a gift. The Bible says, listen, that, that, that there's a story in the Bible where this master gave his servants gifts, right, or talents. And even the one he didn't believe in, he gave him at least one talent. Okay? So even the one who was not believed in, he at least had one talent. You know why most people say, I'm not talented or I'm not, I can't do anything great? You really want to know what it boils down to? You're lazy. You're lazy. You're blaming everything else and everyone else from finding out who you are. From self-discovery, finding out your brilliance, finding out your greatness. You're sitting back waiting for someone else to discover you instead of being who God created you to be. Powerful verse that I love to live my life by is this one. Proverbs 18, 16. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. Special delivery. What? Oh, man, someone brought me a Christmas gift today. So cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Yo, hey, how many of you guys love gifts? Yeah? Christmas season, gifts, I love gifts. I don't like surprises, but I do love gifts. How about we dive into this gift? Let's see what is inside this box. You guys excited with me to go in for this? Yes? Okay. Let's see what's in here. The very first one. Man, these are heavy. What? Oh, my gosh. It's heavy. Get, you, know, you know, the heavier the box, the better the gift, right? Sickness and disease? Dude, that's a horrible gift. <coughs> that's a horrible gift. Why would someone give somebody sickness and disease? That's a horrible gift. Huh? That's horrible, right? See, let's see what else is in here. Depression and anxiety. This is overwhelming. This is heavy. This is a heavy burden to carry. I mean, like, why would someone gift anxiety and depression to somebody else? Why would I give you that? Why would I pass that on to you? Let's see what else is in here. This is the worst gift box I ever got. I got some pretty bad gifts. Pain and sorrow. This one hurts my heart. Like my heart hurts. Thinking about pain and sorrow. Sorrow. Sorrow is not one of those things that you get over just because you took a pain pill. Sorrow is like this long undertow. Pain and sorrow. 
I'm not enjoying this, guys, by the way, this gift box here. This is heavy. This is nasty. Anger and resentment. Now I'm getting pissed off. <laughs> Going to give me this crap? Walk in here in front of everybody, handing me this pretty box, and gift me with anger and resentment. You know what? If my parents did something different, I'd be happier today. If everybody else didn't piss me off, I wouldn't be so angry. Anger and resentment in this pretty gift box. Why did I accept this gift? But we do it all the time. We accept these all the time. A box of anger comes knocking on your door. Listen, we all got ring doorbells. We all saw it coming. You got a Nest doorbell. You got it on video. You saw the anger coming. And you still open the box. Well, if you didn't piss me off. Hey, listen, people can gift wrap and hand you anger all day. Don't mean you got to open it. You are in control of that. Sickness comes knocking. Well, it's flu season. Guess I'm going to get the annual flu. Why did you accept that gift? Don't accept it. No, 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 no. Return that to sender. This ain't coming to my house. This ain't coming here. But we don't because it's a pretty box. And in fact, I'm going to be very careful how I open it because I'm going to keep the wrapping paper. <laughs> that gets me so... <laughs> you got a closet full of old used wrapping paper, don't even use it. I'm going to keep it for some reason. Honestly, I cannot go another holiday season opening bad gifts. And I'm not talking about socks and underwear. Like, that's a really bad Christmas gift. It is. That's not a gift. That's a necessity. I go buy my own drawers, all right? A <laughs> Christmas gift. <laughs> what I can't take is another heart wound. What I can't take is another friend taking their own life because anxiety and depression was too heavy. Can't watch, sit back, and watch healthy people live sick lives. Right, these aren't good gifts. And there needs to be a point in our lives where we turn our eyes and say, God, I need a good gift from you. Look what the Bible says in James 1.16. It says, do not be deceived, brothers and sisters. Do not be deceived. This is telling you, wake up. There's a problem with our theology. There's a problem with your theology if you think anything bad can come from God. Here's a statement that will tick me off so fast. You ready? Well, let's just pray that God shows us the purpose in the pain. What? What kind of delusion, deceived mentality is that? The Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, let's just see why God is doing this to me and what the... God ain't doing evil to you. He's not doing that. We live in a fallen world. We live in a sinful world, and sin happens. Sin happens, and sin hurts, and sin is not a good gift. So it cannot be from God. Look at what he's saying. Wake up. Do not be deceived. Every good and every perfect gift is from God. If it's not good and it's not perfect, it's not from God. Well, I'm just going to sit back and wait on God's will. Is the thing that you're asking for and you're talking to God about and experiencing and the decision, is it good and is it perfect? If it's not, it's probably not from God. 
That's why he's talking so strong. And James is, James is like the half-brother of Jesus. He speaks very strong. He speaks very pointed. Don't be deceived. Don't be, so if he was today, he'd be, hey, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variation or shadow due to change. He's not wishy-washy. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of all creation. God, we need a gift from you. We need something special from you. Send it to us. Hey. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Um. I don't really eat fruit baskets. I don't really like fruit baskets. If somebody gave me a fruit basket, I'd probably re-gift it. <laughs> and I'm a little leery. I'm not a little leery opening another gift. Like, I kind of think that was the Holy Spirit. But then again, maybe it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Because maybe I don't know him that well. So maybe when God actually gives good gifts, I don't recognize them. Should we open this one? Let's see what's in this one. Inside this one, there's love. There's joy. There's peace. Patience. Goodness gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. These are good gifts. And even as I think of God giving me a gift of love, I feel loved. Anger, I didn't feel loved. When I think of God giving me the gift of joy, that makes my heart lighter, my chest not so tight. Anxiety and depression do the opposite. Good, not good. Good. Every good and perfect gift is from God. Now watch this. Luke eleven eleven says, What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent. Now I'll tell you right now, you wanna see me scream like a girly scream and run? You let me walk up on a snake. I don't do the snake thing. I don't do, hey, I, it ain't cute. It ain't cute to have a little snake and put it around your neck. And like, ah, oh, look at me, that ain't cute. Like the devil's a snake. <laughs> I got bit by a snake as a kid. I'm not afraid of nothing. I just dislike them immensely to the point that I'm, ah, I'm going to run. I'm going to run, okay? I don't like snakes. So listen, if you, if you give good gifts to your kids and you give them what they ask for, Christmas is just around the corner, and if your kids are like my kids, they've gotten really good at making very detailed Christmas lists, okay? My kids are now 19, 17, and 9. They have access to our Amazon account, and so we will just go onto our Amazon and find the cart full. Cart is full of stuff, that they, they didn't buy it, but it's full of stuff that they want for Christmas with the right size, the right color, and if it's not in the Amazon cart, maybe they saw it in a magazine, the magazine is left open on the counter with the item circled in marker and a sticky note attached with the size and the color and the specifications that they want from that Christmas gift, right? If our kids know how to ask for good gifts, maybe we should learn something from that as we approach God our Father, right? If you being evil, or what father among you, if your son asks for a fish, we'll give him a serpent, or asks for an egg, wants food, you'll give him a scorpion, something that'll kill him. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts, to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the gift of the Holy Spirit 
to those who ask. You know what I love about the gift of the Holy Spirit? Is that the gift of the Holy Spirit comes walking in with a gift basket of fruit. When the gift of the Holy Spirit walks in, he walks in with the gift called the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is to be uh, to, to abide and be manifest in our lives. Another, another version of this verse is in Matthew uh, 7, 11. He says, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? And here's my big idea today. Are we asking God for the proper things or are we just accepting anything that happens in our lives? Are we intentionally living and asking God for his involvement in our life, or are we accepting anything that comes knocking on our door? Well, I guess I'm just going to get the flu this year. Well, I guess this is just how it's going to be. Well, I guess I'm just going to be miserable the rest of my life. I guess I'm just stuck in this miserable job. Accepting anything that comes along, because that's the way it is. You see, here's what I love about this gift from the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, is that although, yes, it is given to me for the betterment of my life, it is better for me to have joy than anger. It is better for me to have peace than depression and anxiety. So it is for my betterment. But you know what also is true? Is that it's not just for me. That the fruit of the Spirit that is in my life is for me to share with those around me. It's for me to, get ready, you're going to catch this? It's for me to give it out. All right. It's for me to give it out to those who are around me. You had your hand up. You were ready and everything. You saw that coming. You saw me look right at you in your eyes, in your face. You were going to catch it way back there? I swear, if I throw it all the way back there, it's going to splat on the wall. I don't know. These are hard. You get, can come up and get them after church. You come and get after church if you want one of these, all right? Way back there. All right. That's enough. Somebody go get a black eye. It's not just for you. It's for those who are going to see the fruit of the Spirit manifest through you. Because of your joy, people are going to be full of joy. Because of your peace, people are going to have peace. You can bring peace into that situation. Listen, you don't have to get angry and fight at Christmas dinner. You don't have to, right? You can bring self-control to that situation. You don't have to eat three pieces of pie. Two is fine. Two, two is enough. When I accept this gift, remember? And when I accept this gift from God, I feel loved. I feel joy. I feel peace. It's, it's one of those litmus tests that I try sometimes during a worship service. When the song's a little bit quieter and we take a moment to kind of really connect with God, do you feel more peaceful in that moment? Like, can you, can you even sense it? Like, because if you can't, like, if you can never sense peace, if you can never sense tranquility or quietness or, or, or rest, like, if you can't, then maybe you don't have the fruit of the Spirit with you. You know, one of my greatest things, I love to take people fishing or hunting, get out in the woods, get out in nature, and then, like, let's just not talk for, like, the best part is we don't talk for, like, two hours. Just don't talk to me. I'm with you. Don't talk. Just listen. Listen to nature. I was 9,000 feet in the Rocky Mountains, Colorado, sitting up on this big rock overlooking this valley, waiting for the big elk to walk in that never walked in. And like nature sounded different in that part of the country. The animals 
are different at that elevation. So as I elevate and as I move to new places in my hunting experiences and different levels, there's different environments that I can find myself in. And if you never elevate yourself spiritually, if you're always stuck, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that sucks. Even though you know he's with you, even though he's with you, and even though his rod and his staff protects you, being in the valley of the shadow of death is horrible. You're not supposed to stay there. It's a quick visit to get to the next mountain, to get to the next victory. Pastor Mike, man, I'm just going through it. Great, keep going through it. Get through to the other side. Don't get stuck. I mean, we sang a song that we're going to break the chains and, and we're going to be free. Right? We're singing these songs. So, but let's do it. And how do we do it? The fruit of the Spirit. We let this Holy Spirit do his work in our lives and through our lives. I asked God for something. And I got it. Now watch. I want to show you this formula. For those that like formulas, James 1, 5, and 6 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Okay? Now, let me, I know the Bible says don't add to or take away, but we're going to take away for a second. Okay? Just take away the word wisdom. If any of you lack, if any of you lack, ask God. If there's something in your life that you're lacking, ask God. If, it's, if any of you lack finances, ask God. If any of you lacks health, ask God. If any of you lacks emotional stability, ask God. Okay, watch. Ask God who gives generously. Here's what I know about God. This is what I love about God. God, don't give me no bootleg knockoff version of what I ask for. God, hey, listen. Hey. <laughs> I, saw, I saw this video on, I don't know, one of the social media platforms. This guy asked for a PS5. So his wife taped together a PS3 and a PS2. I do the math. I do the math. That ain't God. That ain't God. You're not, you're not gonna ask God for something that's good and then he's gonna give you the Walmart version. I ain't knocking Walmart, but I'm just saying. Walmart soda ain't Coca-Cola, baby. It just ain't the same. And I get it. But that's not God. God gives generously to all without reproach. He's not gonna take it back. This one time somebody gave me something, they're like, here, man, I want you to try this thing out, you know, here. They gave it to me, didn't say nothing else, here. I was like, awesome. I took that thing home, I was working with it, I was using it, and I broke it. I broke it, not intentionally, it just happened, I broke it. They come back like a month later, like, hey, man, remember that thing I let you borrow? <laughs> Think I could get that back? B <laughs> borrow? Now it's awkward. That's awkward, because I thought you gave it to me, and now you're playing the borrowed card, right? So now what do I have to do? I got to go buy them one. I got to go buy it for them. So now I'm buying something I don't even get to keep, because they borrowed it. You know what I'm saying? That ain't God. God ain't going to be like, hey, remember that joy I gave you last Christmas? I'm going to need that back. There's somebody down the street who needs it more than you. There's kids starving in China. That's not God. God doesn't do that to you. He doesn't take back what he gives you. But there is a stipulation to your asking. There is a stipulation. Watch. I'll give you whatever you ask for if you ask in faith without doubting. Ask in faith without doubting. Most people on staff, when they need something or want something for their department, Almost everybody can get whatever they want out of me if they put together a presentation. 
you go put together a presentation. Give me three options. Give me a PowerPoint as to why we need to spend that much money in your department and for what it's in, and you'll most likely get it. But you catch me in the kitchen, sipping a cup of coffee, and be like, hey, by the way, can I have X amount of dollars for my, you're gonna get a no. Huh? Right? I have stipulations, there's things that I wanna see. I wanna see that you put work into this. I wanna know that you believe in this thing that you're asking for. Why do we need to invest that kind of money into what you're asking for, right? So God is saying the same thing. He's not saying no. He's saying, ask in faith without doubting. Know what you're coming to me for. Here's what I love about God, is when you do something in faith without doubting, you actually don't even have to ask. The woman with the issue of blood snuck up behind Jesus, and she took what she wanted. She said within her heart, by faith, if I touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. She approached God, she approached Jesus in faith with no doubt. That's where we miss it, guys. It's not that we're not asking God, we beg God for everything. Oh God, get me out of the speeding ticket. But are we in faith asking without doubt? Here's why, as, as we begin to close, here's why we doubt. Ready? Because we believe that through bad behavior and bad decisions, we have voided the gift that God gave us. I don't deserve. I don't deserve. What I've done in my life, what's been done to me, bad decisions I made, I don't deserve. Man, I'm so glad that God treats us better than we treat ourselves. I'm so glad that his grace is sufficient, that his mercies are new every morning. I'm so glad that God, before I ever asked for forgiveness, provided forgiveness to the entire earth. You're not disqualified, it's actually the opposite. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ actually died for the unqualified, not the qualified. He died for the sick, not the healthy. He died for the poor, not the rich. Come on. He, Christ didn't die for perfect people. He died for people who needed a savior. How much more, now that we are his children, does he desire to bless us? Notice that formula didn't say, if you confess your sins, then God will give you what you ask for. He said, if you ask him in faith, without doubt. Now, I do encourage you to take care of the sin issue. I do encourage you to have a talk with God. Say, God, hey, listen, man, here's some of these weights that I've been carrying around. I've been carrying around some of this stuff that's hurt me. And because of the weight and the pain that I'm in, I've inflicted pain on others. Because of the anger that's been shown to me, I'm expressing anger to other people. Because of the depression that I've seen around me, I'm living in depression. And can we trade? You see, this is heavy. This is really heavy. Like, can you t tell? Like, it's a real rock. This thing's heavy. He says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. It's, it, it, it is an unfair exchange. We're getting the goodness of God and he's taking our crap. He's taking a heavy weight and we're getting freedom. It's an unfair exchange. But God imputed to his son sin so that we could be made righteous. As we close out, I wanna take a moment and ask if there's something that you need from God. And what I'm talking about is I'm talking about something spiritual. If there's something spiritual, emotional, in your soul that you're lacking, I wanna take a moment and ask God. Father, we're here today in full surrender to you. There are things in our lives that are lacking, the fullness of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the free gift that you gave to us. 
Lord, I pray that for those that need to experience your love, they do so this holiday season. Those that need patience or your peace, I pray that great is their peace and their undisturbed composure. You will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Lord, those who need faithfulness, gentleness, those who need self-control, God, I pray they can find what they're looking for in you. Help them to see that allowing the fruit of the Spirit to operate in their lives is their responsibility. Help us to not grow weary or grow lazy in well-doing. Help us to allow the Spirit to be and move in our lives. And if you're here today or you're watching online and you've never had an opportunity to step into that fullness, accepting the Holy Spirit, accepting Jesus Christ into your life, we'd like to lead you through that prayer as a family today. And that prayer goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.